Confession of Faith, Chapter 3 of God's Eternal Decree. Section 3. By the decree of God, for the manifestation of His glory, some men and angels are predestinated unto everlasting life, and others foreordained to everlasting death. Question 1. In what sense are the words predestination, the Greek word, proridzo, foreknowledge, the Greek word, prognosko, election, the Greek word, eloge, uh, ekloge, excuse me, and purpose, the Greek word, prothesis, used in this mystery? Answer. To predestinate signifies to determine something concerning things before they take place and direct them to a certain end. It is used by authors in three ways. Number one, more widely for every decree of God about creatures and more especially about intelligent creatures in order to their ultimate end. Number two, more specifically for the counsel of God concerning men as fallen, either to be saved by grace or to be damned by justice which is commonly called election and reprobation. Number three, most specifically for the decree of election, which is called the predestination of the saints. Question two, doth this word embrace only election, or doth it embrace reprobation as well? Answer, that the word embraces both is demonstrated by the following considerations. Number one, the scripture extends the word pro Ridzain, that is predestination, to the wicked acts of those reprobates who procured the crucifixion of Christ. The Son of Man goeth kata, according to, to horismenon, the appointment or decree. Luke 22, verse 22, and Acts 4, verse 28. And truly the Son of Man goeth, as it was determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Acts 4.28 For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. Herod and Pilate did nothing but what the hand and counsel of God, pro urizen, pre-appointed or pre-decreed, to be done. Number two. The scripture uses equivalent phrases when it says that certain persons are appointed to wrath. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 and 1 Peter 2 verse 8. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2 verse 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. fitted to destruction, in Romans 9, verse 22. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Ordained to condemnation, in Jude, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Made unto dishonor, in Romans 9, verse 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? And for the day of evil, in Proverbs 16, verse 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, for the day of evil. If reprobation is described in these phrases, why can it not be expressed by the word predestination? Number three, because the definition of predestination, that is, the ordination of a thing to its end by means before it comes to pass, is no less suitable to reprobation than election. The second word which occurs more frequently is pro ginosko, for know, or to know beforehand. Paul speaks of it more than once, whom he did foreknow, Romans 8 verse 29. 
For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He hath not cast away his people, which poegno, Romans 11, verse 12. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, And they are called elect according to the foreknowledge. 1 Peter 1, verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Question 3. Is this foreknowledge a bare theoretical knowledge, or is it a practical i.e., does it indicate a simple, excuse me, or is it practical, i.e., does it indicate a simple knowledge of the future, or does it embrace the will of God? Answer. When the scripture uses the word prognosco in the doctrine of predestination, it is not in the former sense of bare foreknowledge whereby he foresaw the faith or works of men. The reasons are as follows. Number one, bare foreknowledge is not the cause of things, nor does it impose order or method upon them, but finds it out. Number two, nothing could be foreseen by God but what he himself had granted, and which would so follow predestination as the effect, not indeed precede it as a cause. In this sense, Christ is said to have been foreknown. Pro ignosmeno. Foredained by God before the foundation of the world. 1 Peter 1 verse 20. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Sometimes it is taken for both the love and election of God, Romans 8.29 and Romans 11, verse 2. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many. Romans 11, verse 2. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. Wot ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Other times more strictly for his love, in 1 Peter 1, verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Both are practical and not mere theoretical expressions. Third, we must explain the word ekloge, election, which now and then occurs. Sometimes it denotes a call to a political or sacred office. 1 Samuel 10, verse 24, and John 6, verse 70. And Samuel said to all the people, See ye him whom the, whom the Lord hath chosen, that there is none like him among all the people, and all the people shouted and said, God save the king. John 6, verse 70. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Sometimes it designates an external election or separation of a certain people to the covenant of God. Deuteronomy 4, verse 37. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them, brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt. But in our discussion, we take it in its sense of election to eternal salvation. In this respect, it may stand for the elect themselves. Romans 11, verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. or formally for the act of God electing, Romans 9, verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Question 4. Is the term election stricter than predestination? Answer. Yes. All can be and are predestinated, 
but all cannot be elected, because he who elects does not take all, but chooses some out of many. The election of some necessarily implies the passing by and rejection of others. Matthew 20, verse 16, and Romans 11, verse 7. So the last shall be first and the first last, for many be called, but few chosen. Romans 11, verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Hence, Paul uses the verb elato to designate election, which implies the separation of some from others. God from the beginning, elato, elected. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks all way to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Fourth, prothesis is often used by Paul in the matter of election to denote that this counsel of God is not an empty and inefficacious act of willing, but the constant, determined, and immutable purpose of God. Romans 8, verse 28, Romans 9, verse 11, and Ephesians 1, verse 11. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Romans 9, verse 11, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Ephesians 1, verse 11, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things, after the counsel of his own will. Question 5. Was there a predestination of angels? Answer. Yes. The scripture expressly testifies of a predestination of angels when it speaks of elect angels. 1 Timothy 5 verse 21. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing but partiality. Their reprobation is also asserted in several places, in 2 Peter 2, verse 4, as well as Jude, verse 6. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Jude, verse 6, And the angels which left not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved into everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. and that eternal fire is declared to have been prepared for them from eternity. Matthew 25, verse 41, Luke 10, verse 18, Revelation 12, verse 10, and Revelation 20, verse 10. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Luke 10, verse 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Revelation 12, verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Revelation 20, verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Question 6. Were the angels elected in Christ? Answer. No. Because, number one, the scriptures, which calls Christ the mediator between God and man, 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. never says so. Further, it expressly denies that Christ took on himself the nature of angels, but the seed of Abraham. Hebrews 2, verse 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. 
two, uh, number two, excuse me, because every mediator supposes discordant parties, for he is of two. Galatians 3 verse 20. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. But there was no disagreement between God and the angels. The elect angels kept their first estate. Number three, it behooves a mediator to be connected with both parties, which cannot be said of Christ and the angels. Number four, Christ is the mediator of those whose propitiation and advocate he is. 1 Timothy 2, verses 5 and 6, as well as 1 John 2, verses 1 and 2. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. 1 John 2, verses 1 and 2. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. But since these acts are concerned only with sinners, they cannot have place with respect to angels. However, Christ may rightly be said to be the head of the angels in respect of dominion and government, because even the angels are under him as mediator, as their lord and king, to whom they minister preserving and defending his church. Hebrews 1, verse 20, excuse me, Hebrews 1, verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? In this sense, the angels and powers are said to be subject to him. 1 Timothy 3, verse 22. Who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him.